When I first started to learn to code, it was kind of pitched as something that was achievable. You can do it in two months. So when I started to learn to code, I thought that mm, maybe it's not going to be so hard. I spent hours watching YouTube videos, reading blog posts and following roadmaps that I'd found online. But what I realized was when I turned to actually try and do the project myself, I would get completely stuck and dejected. I was really disappointed in myself. I thought this isn't working. When I realized that it wasn't working, I decided to turn to science and see what learning theories were there that could actually help me learn to code. These techniques helped me actually become a freelance web developer and I want to share them with you so you can do the same. If you're interested in hanging around and learning these techniques, do stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share with you one technique that single-handedly doubled my learning speed. So point number one is to use repetition and you might be thinking, duh, everybody knows that you need to do repetitive work to remember things. But what I want you to consider is if you've ever tried to learn a foreign language, me for example, I've been learning Portuguese and I know when I first encounter a new word, I'm never going to remember that word. I mean, I might be able to associate it, I might be able to recognize it, maybe if it's similar to English I can remember it, but realistically I need to repeat and encounter that word many, many times. And just reading the same words over and over isn't necessarily the best approach. If we think about learning to code, what we need to do is repetition by application. If you're just sitting there reading and watching the same tutorials over and over, it's not necessarily going to help you. But what will help is applying what you've just learned in a new project. So what I recommend is follow along a project, follow along a tutorial. We all do that and it is helpful to expose us to new things. But when you've followed the tutorial, what I want you to consider doing is take a break, walk away and then try and build something new. If you can build something similar using the techniques that you've just learned, you're going to ingrain that stuff in your head. What the problem is, is when we watch a tutorial and then we see the same thing again and then we see the same thing again, we think that that's repetition, but realistically, it's not applying the knowledge and therein lies the problem. So once you've got repetition down and you're actually building projects with the stuff that you've learned, what I want you to think about is point number two, which is to study less. Now I know this sounds a little bit crazy, but hear me out because the reality is our minds have been molded by big media to binge watch content. We are watching Netflix shows one episode after another without even a chance to pause the video. We've got TikTok reels, Instagram reels, all back to back to back to back. We've got YouTube recommended videos. We are conditioned to digest huge amounts of content one after another. And we think when we're learning to code, oh, I want to go fast, I want to get it all done. That's not the answer, okay? You can't just binge watch a Udemy course or YouTube tutorials and think that it's actually gonna stick in your head. Because I've been there, you've probably been there too, and it doesn't really work, it doesn't stick. To really drive this point home, what I want you to think about is any of those times where you did a cramming session, an all-nighter, you had a work presentation the next day, you were in college and you had to do a project, or maybe you had a big exam coming up for school, uh, how much of that stuff did you actually remember the next day? You know, you spent eight hours back to back, reading, studying, trying to memorize everything, and then now, how much of that do you actually remember? If you're anything like me, you don't remember pretty much anything. And the same thing can happen when you're learning to code. You follow along a 20 hour tutorial, free code camp, really, really good. You feel like you're learning as you go, but the reality is at the end of the day, you've forgotten most of it. So how can we use studying less to our advantage? Well, there's a thing called spaced learning and it's what universities try to implement by having one to two hours a week of the same subject, but it's spaced out. The idea is to have short focused sessions which allow people to actually digest and understand the content before moving on and trying to apply it themselves. You see, the real key is to do small effort consistently to avoid burnout. And burnout in tech is a huge problem. As people who love to learn, we can get sidetracked by concepts that are new and, and exciting for us to learn. And we think that we can digest it all, but actually it's just a distraction. If you work extremely hard, that can be 
helpful, but if you work too hard and burn out, you're not gonna do any work at all. And the difference between doing a small and consistent effort every single day versus doing a lot and then nothing for long extended periods is massive. So what I suggest is that you do very short and intentional study sessions. Now I know what you're thinking, if I'm not gonna follow tutorials, what am I gonna follow? I have a couple of recommended resources and I'm gonna get into some of those later, but if you wanna get regular resources in your inbox, I do have a Substack account, which is linked in the description, which you can subscribe to if you would like. Number three, avoid tutorial hell. You may have seen this in other videos, you may have heard about it, you may have never heard about it, but this is a real thing. And it goes back to what I was talking about at the start. You need to be applying the knowledge yourself. You, you can get stuck in a trap of just watching constant tutorials and feeling like you're learning. But what I call this is lazy learning. This is where you are consuming content, but you're not actually really learning. You're being exposed to things, but you're not learning. The best way to avoid tutorial hell is to seek out very, very good resources. Thankfully, the internet is full of great interactive resources that we can take advantage of. What you wanna find is some kind of an integrated coding environment. So an example of this would be W3Schools, where you can actually see some problems, learn about some concepts, and then Get your hands on the keyboard. Get your hands on the keyboard and actually practice those concepts with real problems. This, in my opinion, is the fastest way to improve your skills. Two other resources I always like to reference when I'm giving people advice are Free Code Camp and The Odin Project. Now, both of these sites offer you an opportunity to get your hands on the keyboard and actually practice in a coding environment. So do take a look at those resources and I will have more on those in future videos. Point number four, you don't need to know everything. When it comes to technology, especially learning to code, there is so much out there. There's so many different avenues you can go down. Say, for example, you wanna learn CSS. Well, then you've got different frameworks of CSS. You've got Tailwind, you've got SAS. These are all areas of the same thing. So do you need to know them all at once? In my opinion, you don't. What you need to focus on is utility-based learning. There's a thing called the forgetting curve. And what it talks about is you have a strong understanding at the start, but as the days go by, that understanding starts to fall away. What is the point of spending hours learning the depth of the details of stuff that you don't really need right now? The utility-based learning approach means learn and understand the basics of something. For example, SAS. SAS is a really powerful way of doing CSS. SAS goes quite deep. I mean, you can learn about the ampersand and things like nesting, which are really, really helpful when you start working. But unless you're working on a project that's actually using SAS, there's no point in following a tutorial or reading in depth about how to use SAS for things like mix-ins, unless you actually need a mix-in. With utility-based learning, you wanna just learn exactly what you need for that project at that time and no more. When you need to use a mix-in, just learn how to use a mix-in. Forget about going too deep on anything. Any topic that you're thinking about learning, learn the basics and that's it. Understand the concepts and then when you need it, go deeper. So how about that hack that doubled my productivity and made me learn twice as fast? It's utility-based learning. Utility-based learning allowed me to just cut off all that extra advanced stuff that I just didn't need to know and allowed me to focus on the key fundamental things that were gonna actually benefit me as a freelance developer. I just got out there and I started freelancing and whenever I need something, I learn that thing. Right now, I'm currently working as a freelance developer and I don't know everything about anything. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. The main thing for me is that I can take on a project from a client, communicate really clearly with that client and deliver exactly what they want. I didn't need to know everything about SAS, React, Next.js, Svelte, Vue, Angular you name it, I didn't need to know everything about everything, I just needed to be able to deliver what that client wanted. So focus on utility-based learning as much as possible and I guarantee you, your learning is gonna be more enjoyable and you're gonna start earning sooner. Now that you've learned how to hack your brain into learning to code way faster, you might wanna learn a little bit more of some of the strategies that I've employed. You can check out the video linked here to learn more. If you'd like to see more from me, do consider subscribing and if you found value in this video, do boost the video by hitting like. It costs you nothing and you can take it back anytime you want, but I'm a small YouTube channel 
and I would really appreciate the support. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.